Hello. All right. This is a bit of a test for me. A little talk about some blues harp, I'm sure, but... Oh, no. There it is. <laughs> I got some lighting coming tomorrow in the mail. I don't know if it'll be better than what's happening right here. This isn't too terrible, but, like, got some lighting coming in the mail for potential nighttime streaming and something that allows me to really set up my desk differently, especially with regards to the laptop and remove it, put it upright, to just have the external monitor, different lighting, different, different setup. It's going to be good. So I thought I'd come on for, I'll be honest, <laughs> I wanted to check the audio quality for Zoom streaming, and that was what prompted me to do this stream and be spontaneous. Every time I do a class, like a harmonica class that I'm teaching, I learn something. Um, I learned something new about technology that I've either something's happened or something's going on. And so one of the tests had to do with audio and that, this is the thing. oh, hey, my phone is on. What I'm trying to do, folks, is get to you so I can see if anybody's here and I can say hello to you if you're chatting. So what's going on? Hey, Jerry. Um, Thanks for the comment. That's very kind of you. How's the audio? Maybe somebody can actually type and let me know how the audio is. Especially with regards to um, enough volume. I definitely had a little bit of breakup in the class. A little more level was a little hotter than it needed to be. We, t we talked about a little Walter today and I went through... Uh, I went through the song, It's Too Late, Brother. And if you don't know that song, go check it out. It's a really wonderful song. It's on a B-flat harmonica in the key of F. And uh, what's up, everybody? And uh, one of the things that we did in that class that was cool was after going through the intro and the solo, I came up with some lines for everybody. I came up with uh, what I call porch jams. And you've probably heard me talk about that on this channel. You know, a typical porch jam. Here's a G harp. a 12 bar fashion but they might follow they might follow just a one chord kind of thing where they don't have implied chord changes going on <clears throat> so in this class what i did was i came up with a uh, some porch jams well, i'll explain why i'm sharing this in a minute but the porch jams were derived from lines in the song harmonica lines and influenced by even some of the guitar stuff And so what, well, I guess what I'm saying is listen to your music. If you want to get good at like learning the groove and recalling some of the lines that you're learning in the solo, take them and create them into that style of music, that thing. So like on a B flat, if the line was. Just added some chords to it. You know what I mean? So right in between the line, you have an opportunity to put in some chord and get it supported with a little bit of that um, rhythm in there. That's the word. And that's kind of cool because then you're you're really processing the, the, the ideas on a different level, you know? So like, so like, I'm just trying to think, like my babe's got the guitar, you know. I'm moving to a G harp. 
right? So you could turn that into a porch jam and learn some of that groove by just playing it. And you know who's great at that? As I'm playing it, I'm thinking of Kim Wilson. Um, that CD, uh, CD bar, the Barbecue Sessions, it's got Pine Top Perkins and Big Jack Johnson. Who, I think it's just called the Barbecue Sessions, but it's Big Jack Johnson. And Kim's playing, um, they're doing a My Babe thing, just guitar and harp, if I remember correctly. And then eventually maybe just the harp, and Kim's just rocking out that line. -da 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 -da, and he's just improvising off that for a long time, and it's really inspiring. Go listen to that. If you don't own that or you haven't listened at least go stream that, whatever you got to do, <clears throat> go check that out. All right, I want everybody to have a little chat in the chat box amongst yourselves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh this. I have a drink that I'm making a toast for my good friend, <clears throat> Heath. He's having a birthday today, so happy birthday to you, Heath. You may never see this, but happy birthday. Cheers. I'll be right back. I mean, really, you don't need me. The background does enough. The background is enough on its own. But back to the discussion of porch jams. The more you work out on your own, and these bass lines and these rhythms and grooves, that, is, that has got to be two things. This is most in, fun I've ever had is doing this kind of stuff, being able to play it all on my own with no accompaniment. And it's helped me solidify and understand a lot about the music I'm trying to interact with. It's done so much for me. So does it look like I'm in a cave? Uh, good advice, Carrie. Yeah, I learned the high end. Don't be afraid to reach for the high end. I'm just, I have a backdrop behind me. That's all that is. <clears throat> but I like the idea of being in a cave, especially with this lighting. You can crack a brew open, do whatever you want. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to hang out, but I'm going to hang out for a minute here. Well, here's some things on my mind. This would be fun to share. Some things that I'm considering cooking up for the new year. Don't hold me to anything. You guys know I change my mind constantly. I say I'm going to do a series of something, and then I just ditch it. Or I'm very spontaneous, and it's wonderful, but it also has its downside which is sometimes things don't happen or come to fruition because I am distracted by another idea or a new thing that I really want to do more. So some of the things I'm thinking about is offering a class on um, third position beginner, third position chromatic playing. So a little talk about technique and approach to the most common way that the chromatic is used in the world of blues is third position. And that's, I would, I would basically create a, kind of an instrumental structure thing that we would learn. I'd record it first so that you'd have an audio recording of it to go by and feed off of. And then in the class, I would just go through those lines. That's one thing. Because a lot of people have asked about chromatic, and I'm not a heavy chromatic player, but I can sh certainly show you how to get started with it. So kind of be more of a beginner thing. Uh, although I would say intermediate, because I, I, I go through octaves. I will go through the octaves, and that's a little more advanced. Uh, what else? Um, I want to create more por of those porch style jams. I just recorded a series of videos that I'm going to upload to YouTube soonish. I think I'm going to upload them all or, of what I captured. I was up in the mountains and had some alone time and I captured 
just me jamming just by myself, kind of like, you know, when I come on, just what I did, sort of porch stylish, but more really just getting into it and really like stretching out with, with the improvisation side of it, side of it. So bringing in more melodic phrasing into that rhythm, stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to release those videos and maybe some of that could become a class because I feel like some of the most, whatever the spontaneous stuff is that I offer, like when I come on and I just post something randomly and play for you guys, that's usually the stuff that everyone's like, teach me that. What was that? So I'm starting to pay attention finally and understand that I can create content and then create the, the class afterwards, take it and break it down. So I, that would be a lot for those video clips you'll see. It was fun. It's fun doing that. Oh, Jerry's asking about any info on the live sessions on the east coast of the U.S. in the near future. Thanks for the comment about the porch lessons. Yeah, I have offered a front porch class that I can link up later in this video and a back porch class. Maybe offer a YouTube discount. If you've seen it on YouTube, I'll put a coupon code in there too. Jawan, what's up, my friend? So I don't have any information on anything in person, any harmonica events. I really don't. Not, not at the moment. Not sure what to tell you, but you know, if you jump on Facebook, it's loaded with too much information. So maybe you'll find something on, on Facebook through the Modern Blues Harmonica group or maybe put that out there to the group pose the question <laughs> that's cool carrie yeah you know i do have more than one cousin i don't know which cousin you were talking to but that's really cool thanks electric gypsy blues for that comment yeah the Dig three. If you guys don't know the dig three, you must have seen it if you tune into this channel. But it's my newest project is a three piece. Andrew Duncanson on vocals, and he's doing all the songwriting, and he plays guitar. And Jerry Hunt on multiple instruments: foot drums, harmonica, guitar, guitar hybrid string instruments like bass guitar combo. And this project, the Dig Three, you can find us by going uh, type in Shellist Bandcamp, and that'll take you to my discography of recordings. It may not be everything I've put out there, but it's a decent chunk. <laughs> okay, cool, man. And the Dig Three, but the Dig Three is basically just a. It's like it's like that old school raw blues. That's what that is. Go check it out if you haven't listened to it. Um, we ha we just went in, I'll let you know right now, I haven't really put this out there, but we went into the studio uh, last month, early last month, top of December, and we recorded another CD. So we got one in the tank that'll be coming, mm, who knows, maybe sometime around the springtime or summertime we'll release some of that. And it went very well. Those se that session was really good. It's always fun going to hang with those guys and to record because they're just amazing musicians. <clears throat> what else can I tell you? You know, sometimes when I come on sp spontaneously like this, I hope to catch people that are tuning in that ask random questions about harmonica. I, I do want to. I, I do want to help. Um, if I'm already on and I can help in any way, that would be something I would want to do. So if you have questions and you're thinking, is it okay to ask the question? You should ask the question you're thinking. You know, because the problem, the real challenge with, with the internet these days or you go to social media is you get a thousand answers for one question and then you're more lost than you were before you asked the question. Because <laughs> you got everyone's opinion. So my hope is that people will ask those questions when I'm on here doing a live stream, especially um, some of my favorite workshops I've done in person were 
designed around being super spontaneous in the entire work, not the entire, but the, a big portion of the workshop is designed around like people just throwing out questions like, and it turns into a conversation and a mini lesson on that, that topic. <laughs> Johan, ask away. Hey man, it's not too late to get the class today. I just updated it so it's for sale on the website if you go to the website. Go to the homepage and click the link. It should take you to the product. Um, I got to do the class twice today. It was fun. It's the first time I've done that. Well, man, I don't know if it's the first time. Maybe it's the second time I've done that. Uh, yeah, I did it twice because for the first time in two and a half years, Zoom captured audio with no video. And... They had no idea why it happened, but they reset a bunch of settings and then I tested it and it started working. So I just taught the class right over again. The class was fine live. Everyone saw me on video. Just the recording didn't come out with the video. It was just audio. Anyway, I redid it and it was all good. Okay, here we go. Questions. Good, good, good. I don't play Moon Dance, so I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's a lot of his stuff is in A minor. Does anybody know? That would be a good, probably fifth or third position. You might be able to get away with cross harp, depending on how much of the melody you're going to play and whether you need those overblows. I don't know if you're an overblower. I do like the new, uh, so here's a question from Electric Gypsy Blues. Do you like the new Horner harp mic? Or have you tried? Yeah, I've definitely tried it. I helped them when they first released it. Uh, before they released it, they came to some of the artists to have us play it and give feedback and input. But I love the mic. I do think that it sounds especially good through old tube amps. Like when I plug that into my 57 Supro, which you guys, if you've seen my videos, you've probably seen that many times. That thing sounded amazing. It's got a dynamic element, I want to say. Also, you can plug it into a big amp like a basement and get a decent sound. It's going to be a little more of that mid-range compared to like... A, well, it'll be similar to a crystal with a little less breakup of a crystal mic. And it, but it'll have a similar frequency range, I'd say. It's not like super bottom heavy, but it's it's sort of midi. But it's nasty. It's nice. So I like it. Example of a random question that turned out to be a super relevant. <laughs> What's an example of a random question that turned out to be super relevant? Oh, that's a hard one. I'm think of that on the spot. Lots of things, man. That's the thing. It could be anything. Like somebody asking about a bend and then it turns into really eight different conversations, like not different conversations, but eight different points about what makes up a bend, like uh, embouchure, breath control, uh, tongue position, relaxation, what's the jaw and neck, you know what I mean? Throat awareness, all these things that can contribute. But uh, let, let me come back to that. That sounds like you're just trying to be funny because you're a funny dude. You are funny though, Juwan. <laughs> What do I think about playing A minor with an F? What position does that put me in? Puts me in a funky position. I don't play that way. I haven't done that. Is that like, four? what is that? I get my cheat sheet out. Here's my cheat sheet. That's fifth position. Oh, yeah. Well, I do play a little fifth position. I didn't realize that's what it correlated to on an F harmonica. Um, I've shared this before, you guys, but I'll share it again quickly. Besides learning stuff in fifth position, like... Right? Like... St. St. James and stuff, which is very accessible in fifth position. Hopefully uh, we're talking about the same thing. But what I've learned to play in fifth that I, that I never get to play it, and this would be a, I need to teach this. this hold up. This is a good, slow down. So I learned this from my buddy PT Gazelle. 
Sugar. You guys know that song? Stanley Turrentine? You don't need any overblows to play. It sounds like this on an A harp. Now, I'm playing it on an A harp. I'm not playing it on an A flat harp, which I believe would put me in C if I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah, A flat harp for the key of C. And like you were saying, the key of A goes on an F harp. So here it is. I'll let you hear it real quick. What happened when I hit this part, I started to switch on, but sure I was going to go to octave and it screwed up the whole phrasing. Let that be a lesson. That line sounds like. Instead of however I played it. So you, when you descend that line coming down, keep the embouchure. <laughs> Don't switch too much. I switch all the time. So that's why my brain went for it. and It didn't work. But that is a cool one. It's called Sugar. And it's totally badass. On a, in fifth position, you play it on an A flat harp for the key of C, which is what it's in, or C minor. How do I get a vibrato on a draw bend? This is turning into this. See what I, I did this. I asked for these questions. So your vibrato on a draw bend. To answer your question, I will start by saying don't think of it as a draw bend. Think of it as just a draw note. Everyone's thinking of the bend first, and psychologically, you want to reverse that, I think, and think of it as what are the mechanics that are happening outside of the note being, it does, it is going to bend, but it's an oscillation of pitch. So before you think about what bend you're on, and most of these bends are going to be microtonal or half step, those are the best ones, but what you want to think about is just pulsing the air on a draw note. A harp, through draw. If that's too fast and you can't keep that in time, if it's not in time, it's not going to work, then slow it down. Slower if you need to. That's how I got there. I started that slow, and it was all about how even you can keep the pulse. Then once you get to your full speed, which is your natural vibrato, you barely need any bend to make it sound good, but when you do bend, you don't need to go much lower than the half. You can bring it down to the full step, but... Start with just those little bends. And two draw doesn't really need to be bent at all. It'll kind of take care of itself. You could lift it from a bend. That's my advice. Tim Pan Alley. I got to revisit that. Cool. Third position. Nice work. Find as many different, my advice is find as many of the different examples of classic tunes and or instrumentals instrumentals are a good way to go for third position and start with something that fits your your level i mean you can learn with any amp the fender blues oh is a harp the fender blues deluxe harp i mean i can't say because i haven't played them but um I do think that the, that it matters. I think that if you if you pick up a harmonica like a special twenty, you'll be really happy. Not many people dislike a special twenty. I, they play really nice and airtight, and they're good for beginners all the way up to pro level. Beginning to overblow. Hey Travis, what's up, buddy? I would I would just recommend starting with a C harmonica and focus on six overblow. And beginners think of it as like blow bending at first. It's a similar embouchure to blow bending. And if you can't blow bend, then you shouldn't be working on this. You should be working on mastering draw bending and blow bending first before ever getting into your overblows. Come as close as you can to mastering um, those bends. You really need that. And that'll strengthen your ability to overblow anyway. But essentially, you're, it's like blow bending. Think of it. 
these quick bursts. If that's too hard, start on the blow and then try to go into it. And then, you know, also consider the fact that you might want to set up the harmonica. You might, because a lot of harps, you get lucky out of the box, but depend, the lower keys, that's a challenge. They need to be gapped tighter. What do I think about playing through a bass amp? That can be done. I've done it many times. You might want to lower the bass and raise the treble since it's a bass amp. It's going to be real muddy probably, potentially. So, so compensate for the settings. Kerry says, Big River is the best cheap harp. I won't argue. I don't, I don't want to argue with that. Got some cool unboxings coming up. I have a lot to share. I have more to share coming up than I've ever had on this channel in the history of since 2006 to today. I have more coming up. That's why you've seen posts like coming up every day. I'm posting something pretty much or every other day, sometimes every day. I'll, I won't overload. I'll try not to overload, but every couple, two, three days, you're going to see a video for a long time because I have ideas of what I want to share at this point. Yeah, Juwan, that fifth position is juicy. That it is. It's kind of a sexy position, man. Especially that kind of that melody, you know. Oh yeah, that's my stuff that's on as my computer. Jeez, volume. You have challenge more of a challenge with the rock rhythms. Um, well, there's more. The first thing that comes to mind is just to say that there's more opportunity to work on rhythm playing in blues than there is in rock. I mean, I shouldn't say that. There's rhythm in rock for sure, but I mean, kind of natural to a harmonica, it's going to come. <laughs> A little bit easier. I think of, okay, let me counter that by saying you, you're wanting to play the rhythm, but maybe it's just more the how to support role and comp. Let's use that word, comp. And then fills. How, what are all the things you're doing? Because there's not like, it's case by case, Thomas, I guess is what I'm saying. I'd need to hear the song and then I could tell you if rhythmically I'd be playing something that, because there are times, there are classic rock songs that have rhythms, you know, plenty of things that you, that the harp is actually even featured on the rhythms like I hope to be offering in the classic rock class coming up eventually um like train train and stuff or, or whatever but it's case by case give me a, a song idea maybe and I can help backing tracks are you asking about backing tracks if anybody needs backing tracks you can go to harmonica123.com go to the website and check it out How do you stop from playing too hard when you're in a band setting? Yeah, yeah, I'm drawing too hard while playing with a mic and playing in a louder setting. Well, get your sound right, that's step one, because if you can't hear yourself well, you're gonna overplay and you're gonna kill your harps. They're gonna go flat all the time. That's, that's a great sign that you're overplaying as your harmonicas are going flat. You're like, this harmonica's just flat again. Okay, well, you're playing too hard. And that happens when the band's too loud, you just don't have your monitor set right, or you need more, or you need the band to just bring it down on the solo. So that's step one, is getting the band to cooperate and getting your sound right. If they're kicking ass and you're trying to solo and you cannot hear yourself, you're the one to blame. You have to communicate that to them and say, hey, I, whoa, <laughs> say, hey, I need, you need to give them the cue, hey, come, bring it down, bring it down. Just you got, and if it doesn't work, you need to talk to them if you're gonna play with them again, and that's the way to solve that problem. And just try to relax. Remember, you can only play so loud, and this thing will only get so loud. It's a tiny little instrument. When you force it past that, it's gonna sound like crap. Tonally, it starts to just, and it doesn't react correctly. Like you go for a bend, and the note freezes up, stuff like that. That's a sign of overplaying. So play to the to the instrument's limit. And, and do your best to con control what you can and then let the rest just be what it is.
Yeah, the lower the harp, the more difficult the overblow. I agree. The higher, the harder to control. Usage varies. All I got to say is, you guys that are hung up on overblows, make sure you really, really... A lot of people come to me take a lesson and go, I say, how's your bending? And they go, oh, no, it's good. I want to talk about overblows or something. And I'm like, well, can we? Can I hear it? And then it turns out that they they need a lot of help with bending. And they just didn't realize it. And that could be you. So what I would suggest is that you really master it from all the angles, legato, staccato, uh, intonation, your pitch control, and making sure that you've examined it. Oops. There's two bends in there. I need practice on that. That's a that's piercing. So what I'm showing you is that like you can treat each of these bends as like part of a note. I'm not even trying to play a scale, just hitting all the bends in a run, right? And then legato. trying to sustain some of that stuff. Really spend more time than you think working on the bending. Whoa. There you go, Ron. Flatten that seventh draw. You're not the only one to do that. I've seen that going around a little bit. Major pentatonic. Me too. I've been working this kind of... Let me do it on a different key. G harp. Just running the most all scale notes up to five blow and then up here. All scale notes though. Mm hmm. Right on, Marcine. Good to hear that. I'm glad you're back at it. Yeah, exactly, Juwan. Couldn't get you couldn't get the three draw, and then you're like, yeah, but now you got it, right? I mean, like, and constantly it's a you're refining it. So every day I'm sitting there playing around with this dang three. Something I did earlier when I was jamming for you guys is I played off of the three hole in that little improvisation. So back to the G harp. Where the heck did I put that? There it is. And this is something that is not hard to do, but it but it's specific to the chord changes, the notes that you select on the three. So it's three draw clean for the one chord and then on the four chord you use the half step and I'm embellishing around this stuff with the chords and some single notes as well also the notes are introduced with the note below it so like three draw introduces three three half step and introduces three draw Three full step introduces three half. And when I get to the five chord, I do the reverse. I come from the note above, three full step, sorry, half step to three, down to three full. And then bring it back up. So it sounds like this. This is a great one to learn. I've taught this somewhere in a video on YouTube. I don't know if it was the three hole shuffle video or not or maybe it was something else but something like this Oh, <laughs> 
So you get the idea. You need to start to work with that three draw as the focal point for each chord. I'm on a tangent. Well, Carrie, that's, yeah, that's, that's cool, man. If the great Junior Wells gave, was hugging you, you must be a cool dude. Cheers. Junior wouldn't, wouldn't hang out with you if you weren't cool. Exactly, the major, minor, third mix. That's it. Major, minor. Totally. Quick rock melody messing with the kid. Yeah, the guitar line, you mean? I don't know if you're asking me something about that, but yeah, that's a good one. Oh, back to like the rock thing that we were talking about. But yeah, messing with the kids are great. It's, depending on who covered it, it's still a blues, but like it's upbeat and rocking, I suppose. That's a good line um, that the guitar is playing, right? Everybody should know. That's it. What's this I hear? That's all. Yeah, that's a good one. Is it after you get a good overblow? Is it easier to get them on the out of the box harp? Yeah, it gets easier, especially on a C harp on a six overblow. But no, most of the time you want to set your harps up if you're going to be overblowing. You have customized harps that can get overblows. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to mess with them. You close them too much and the note seizes. And it just stops on you. And then if it's not close enough, it's it won't work. It doesn't it's all squeaky and terrible. <laughs> Michael Crawl. Yes, I'm live, man. Uh -huh. I see. The lick that I struggled with the most to learn in my entire career. Well, I don't know what that exact riff would be, but I can tell you the player that it would be. I'll tell you a quick story about this too. Yeah, Paul DeLay, for sure. Paul DeLay is the answer, is as far as the artist. He's such a creative player. He's a huge source of inspiration for me. Um, still is. Uh, but uh, I did a series of lessons when we went into lockdown and COVID hit. I went into a, a series of lessons with a player that you guys should know, maybe by now, Shane Sager. And Shane... Shane is tours with with Sting. He's on tour with Sting as a harp player, and so he's doing great things. And he's he's into the blues. He's a super blues harp guy and a great person. He's a friend of mine. So we started. You know, I met him through a workshop that was out on the East Coast years ago. The point I'm making is we did a series of lessons together. Where he hit me up and we did many lessons during the beginning of the pandemic. And much of what we did, a lot of those lessons centered around Paul DeLay solos. <laughs> he had me working my tail off more than anybody has. And he was eager to, to really learn. So I hope that Shane hears this and sees this. And so we'd break down these solos and man, some of those were just like, you. I mean, I. Yeah, really put some time in and really listen to what Paul DeLay is doing on some of these tunes. But my answer would be go listen to Paul DeLay and, and you'll find some of the answers in that. Yeah, third position can be, can be played in either Michael, either major or minor. You just change up a couple notes. Here's the blue scale, minor. And then the major. Yeah. 
like my girl. And all the major stuff is also the swing. Like when you play, okay, when you play in third position and it's a major song, you can use either one. This scale. Or you can use it major or minor on top of that major that you're playing on. And you should mix it, mix those scales. But the majors, the benefit of the major scale, the pentatonic in third has all the swing lines. So when you hear Kim Wilson going, that's all major pentatonic lines. He's not, he's not feeding off the blue scales, feeding off the, the major stuff. Yeah. Please do seamless home inspection. Come take a class soon. If you have not, I don't talk about it. There's two things I don't talk about at all. I do a lot of classes. I teach every single month, currently two to three classes a month. That's about to increase. I have an idea for some other offerings. So if, if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, jump on harmonica123.com and join the, the list on the homepage. But um, I also have a membership and I've talked about it, but I have a very small membership. And for as little as 12 bucks a month, you can join me like this for an hour straight at a scheduled time. And they're all recorded too, so you can download them if you can't make it. And my members come on and they ask questions and we discuss it. It turns into a cool little roundtable discussion. We're all on video. We use Zoom meetings so we're all, we can see each other. And one at a time, we go through questions where people play and get feedback. And that membership's right on the main menu at harmonica123.com. You can cancel any time. That's my pitch on the membership and the classes. But the classes are cool. You get the recording to download and the notes as well afterwards. <laughs> mm-hmm. I heard that. Jawan's preaching. Yeah, the basics are where it's at. When you have, when you struggle with an advanced concept, you have to inspect the foundation. Yeah, go check out Paul Delay. I gotta revisit that Hound Dog. Yeah, Junior Wells. There's so much good stuff out there. Come on. What are my thoughts on Will Wilde? I think Will's a great player. I only met him once. He came to Spa um, a few years back. He came to Spa. Spa is the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of the Harmonica. That's the organization. And every year they have a convention. And he came out to this convention. And I got to meet him real quick. He's a passionate player who has a lot of musical understanding he's got good approach and technique too he's not just like a rocker like he's wailing he the guy can really wail you guys know will wild if you don't check out will wild he's pretty popular i would say that most of the people that were listening to me i would assume have checked out will he'd be a great person to bring into a global blues harmonica summit I'm really glad we're talking about this that that is one of my classes but it's a summit so i feature another player and then they're usually a little longer and people can interact and ask their own questions to the the person that's being featured in the summit and then usually we have them teaching a little bit about their approach and talking about their approach and style and and hopefully breaking down something that's now he does play his own special tuned harmonicas though right so, but he could probably share something on a standard harmonica. That'd be cool. Thank you. Blues Duck, thanks for the, Ronnie's classes are awesome. Reasonably priced and chock full of information. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate you. Uh, it's a good way to, to this is a great discussion. 
that we could have to close out this this little stream here tonight. Um, and the, somebody asked, um, if I learn all my idols solo, all my brain remembers is those solos. I'm trying to create. How do I create my own solos? You know, creating your own approach. Your this is my thought on this, your own style, your own approach to playing and, and, and not uh, just defaulting to memorized portions of songs comes from absorbing so much of many different styles and many different players that you have no choice if you're being spontaneous, but to start to process and emote multiple styles and ideas from multiple players to where you're mixing and matching and it becomes your own. So I think that's what I think about when I think about uh, great soloists. They don't sound like anybody, right? They sound like themselves. Where did it come from? It came from their influences and it came from something inside of them that found their own voice. But I feel like you find your own voice by listening to so many different players that you're able to pull at will a Clarkism and a Walterism inside of your playing and a wellism and a Hortonism, you know what I'm saying? Before you know it, you're playing you, but you're still paying respect to somebody that influenced you. Yeah. Have I played with Joe Felisco? I have. Joe's a good friend of mine. We keep in touch. He gives me yoga tips. Joe's been a huge influence influence on me over the years. Quick Joe Felisco story. <laughs> what did I do with my drug? Oh, it's hiding. I have a little sip here to have with y'all. Quick Joe Felisco story. The first time, this is a good one. First time I ever went to a spot. I think this was the first one. If not, it was one of the earliest. In 2001, there was a spa convention in Dallas, Texas. These harmonica conventions always end up having every night a blues jam. And Joe Felisco leads the blues jams. And so he's pointing to you if it's your turn to play the so you know, and he's 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 running the show. Well, I didn't know Joe, and I ended up sitting and listening and, and and he he starts to play he plays some too i've never had a more profound musical experience live than i had that night when he did that the sound that came out of his harmonica compared to any of the other 50 to 60 and many of those being pro players that were around us didn't have was that his sound filled up the entire hotel lobby a huge lobby like an enormous hotel his sound sounded like 50 harp players making the same sound at the same time it sounded like an elephant walking down the hall and i like i remember how overwhelming it was to hear that live i was like holy shit like oh my god like he's that sounds coming out of that hymn right now. <laughs> Joe Felisco that hit me over the head with a baseball bat the first time I met him. That, you know, that experience, I was like, wow. And then we became good friends, you know, slowly over the years, um, over the next 22 years, 23 years, 22 years now. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's, he's been so gracious to me uh, from, from the beginning, just giving me tips on how to get one of the, here's another quick Joe Felisco story. It took me aside uh, a few years later than after that experience, but I'm still, you know, not green, but like, you know, I'm, I've got a lot to learn at this point. And he says, can I, <laughs> he said, can I give you a tip, man? And I said, sure. What, what's up? And he's like, so when you play, you can play real quiet. And he just starts to play. And he plays in front of my face. He's right in front of me. We're like face to face. I wonder if he remembers this. 
and he just played for like what felt like an eternity. Maybe it was like five minutes, but it felt like an hour. And he and he played the most beautiful, like cool, like country kind of blues harp rhythm stuff and some melody. And then he stopped and he just went, I just wanted to share that with you, man. And I was like, whoa. Like he was trying to impress upon me that that's where all the nuance is. That's what I took from that. And that's that's where all the control is. And he's right. He's dead on. The quieter you play. I was just playing a little with more air than I needed to. Um, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I played with Joe. Yeah, I saw that, Sadie. I saw that. Just keep practicing. You can't do any, You can, I can do the two bends on the two draw. Okay, but you can't do any on the three draw. Try different key harmonicas. And remember that as you move up, like a higher note, like a three, instead of the, the bend being a little further back, focus on the top, top front portion of your tongue, more so than the middle or back. Middle, usually the three, depending on the key. So where it hits up here, It'll be a little more in front of where it would be. Or, so the two would be further back and a little more forward would be where that three is. That's my tip to you. Focus that tongue pressure upward in a different spot. Sure, Marcin. Do I do yoga? Well, Joe has been giving me tips on stretching and stuff. And I'm not a, I'm not a yogi, but I'm, uh, pri I, I do some stretches most days. I try to work on that because I've had a lot of low back pain over the years especially recently. So I'm 51 now. So I'm stretching a bunch more and I'm going to for 2023, not to be like, oh, it was my goal, but like, I'm going to start stretching a bunch more. I don't know if there's a video of that on YouTube with Joe playing in that jam, you know, when he played that, I doubt it. This was 2001, less people with cell phones. Or, I mean, it was around, but it was less common with video. He is a he is a tongue block master for sure. Well, I appreciate you guys hanging tonight. This has been fun. Thanks for doing that. Check out the website, y'all. Come hang with me on the membership. Maybe check out a month and just come hang and see what's up. See what's going on in those sessions. And uh, check out a class. I'll be back. I have a lot to upload.